I just uh, met Kim Lee the other day for the first time, was connected to her by one of my oldest friends, Arena, who's, who's actually here today as well. And Kim could talk forever about recent accomplishments of hers. She has so many. She was recently picked by Business Journal as one of the 100 most influential women in the Silicon Valley. She's a CEO. She has uh, a company with the, the clientele like Airbnb and Pandora and AT&T and a company that's mostly run by women and minorities. So she has a lot she could talk about from that perspective. But more recently in her life, she's looked at, like Chike was saying, some of her other identities. And she's here to share some of the other identity of her earlier life with us today. So welcome, Kim. Thank you, Thank you Elliot. Son, awesome. This is a hard act to follow day. <laughs> I grew up homeless. Saigon, Vietnam, 1978. My mother, my brother, and I are sneaking out of town. Our rendezvous point was a tiny fishing village along the Mekong li River. You see, we'd lost a war and part of that, we lost our freedom. And to me, I was six at that time. This was just a great adventure. We slip into a tiny fishing boat, sailed into the South China Sea. My mother is seasick the entire time and stays below deck. I occasionally slip onto deck, listening to rumors of pirate ships trolling the sea, looking for victims like us to rape and to rob. We spend five days at sea. We run out of food and water, and we were only eating rice with salt and pepper to begin with. And on top of that, our boat engine had died. We were drifting in this vast sea aimlessly, no land in sight. And finally, we spotted land. We were so excited, we all jumped off the boat. We finally found some place. I'm living under a plastic tarp, dirt floors, thatched walls, mosquitoes and head lice everywhere. The lice was so bad that we had to shave my four-year-old brother's head to get rid of it. Mom's depressed, and rightfully so. She'd left behind three other kids and everything she knew, everything she owned. And so it falls on me to get in line, the nearby wells for water. It's my job to get in line for food rations from the United Nations. Vegetables and fruit were really rare. We are living in a refugee camp in Malaysia. We are actually the lucky ones, waiting for any country to accept us. After one year, there was a generous family from a church helped us come to the US. Starting with nothing, no money, we didn't know anyone. We didn't know the language. We rent a tiny bedroom with another Vietnamese family. My mother, my brother, and I sharing one room, sharing one bed. My mom works minimum wage as a dishwasher. Even though in Vietnam, she actually owned a large restaurant. And I learned English watching Sesame Street. I'm sitting in this tiny living room the two sisters from the other family are sitting close by, and they're speaking to each other in English because they know I don't understand English. And I feel like an outsider, unwanted, lonely. 
and suddenly they say something to each other in English. And the light bulb goes off in my head. And I was actually part of the conversation. It was so free, part of that. Coming to America, I thought my days of being homeless were over. But I was wrong. My mother meets a man who she thinks is a great husband and a great provider. And living with him is like having a noose around my neck, slowly tightening around us. Because whenever they have big arguments, he kicks us out of his house. And we spend occasional nights, cold nights, huddled in our van, hoping that he will take us back. And from those experiences, I told myself that when I grew up, I would be self-reliant, self-sufficient, and no one would ever have that kind of power over me again. And I know the only way to break out of that cycle, to break out of that poverty and dependency, is to get an education. And so when I graduated from high school, $500 to my name, I leave Tucson, Arizona, and I go to Phoenix for college. I'm living in a two-bedroom apartment, four other girls, so there are five of us. And I volunteer to sleep on the floor because there's no room for an extra bed for me, and it's cheaper that way. Because I reminded myself, my goal was to get straight A's, graduate, and get a job. The college years. I was free to explore. I was free to grow. I was free to learn who I am. Those were awesome years. And what I discovered about myself was that I was resilient, determined, strong, tough, and lovable. That I'd never felt before. And so four years of college, after four years of college, I had five job offers from the six major accounting firms. So I met my goal. And today, my passion is to build an ecosystem where women and minorities reach power and financial liberation. Thank you.